Hi there, this is Abhishek and in this video I will talk about measure of variation in data. At a very high level we have uh, three measure of variation which is range, standard deviation and coefficient of variation which helps us identifying the measure of variation in data. There are couple others like variance which is nothing but uh, if you remove the under root uh, in this case so here is this uh, the formula for standard deviation and if you remove the square root then what you get is the variance and uh, once you put the square root you get the standard deviation and because standard deviation is uh, mostly used uh, parameter for uh, identifying the measure of variation in data that's why I'm explaining it over here to you so range standard deviation and coefficient of variation uh, cumulatively helps us getting a good idea about what how much there is a val variability in our data. So here I have uh, a data set uh, that I also used in the previous video and that is a stock data uh, where I have the stock A, B and C and that has uh, 10 years of stock returns that is a yearly return that this stock has given and we are going to identify which stock uh, has the most consistent return by measuring how much there is a variation in their return in past 10 years. So looking at the very first uh, measure of variation uh, method uh, which is range then it is nothing but the minimum quantity which is subtracted from the maximum quantity. So here in this case of let's say stock A if minimum quantity is 8% or the minimum value is 8% and the maximum value is let's say 35% in this case then if you are subtracting 9 from 35 what you will be getting is 27% so it gives us a very high level idea about overall variability in your data so that helps us identifying uh, whether our data has uh, very high variability or low variability uh, looking at their uh, end starting and end points. So if I go in into the properties of this data table and go to expressions then here you can see I have used the max return and then I've sub subtracted the ret minimum return value for each of the stock and uh, I have the values in front of me now let's move on to standard deviation which is little bit complex if you look at the formula over here but the good thing is this you don't really have to do any of this thing uh, or calculate the formula with, with some complex expression but ClickQ has an inbuilt function which is STDDEV standard deviation uh, which has all this internal algorithm and finally gives us the value by just putting that function so if I go in there again and within the expression here I have just used stdev return so it is giving me the standard deviation of the stock returns of each of this stock so putting the formula and getting the outcome is fine but under unless if you don't understand what it really means and why it is important for as a measure of, as a measure of variation in data then you will lose the significant impact and won't be able to translate the results in business terminologies. So let's evaluate what, what it is telling over here. What does this 10%, 7% for stock B and 7% for stock C is saying to us? So as a standard deviation, as a measure of uh, variation in data, it basically tells us if we have a mean of let's say 19%, then how many values are in there between one standard deviation below to it and one standard deviation above to it. That means, let's say for example stock A, I have a mean of 19% and those uh, of you who don't know mean, uh, in my previous video I have explained that it is nothing but the average of your values. So in this case average of, average of returns of stock A. So which is 19%. And 19% would be lying somewhere here at this point, right? So if I just select a stock A, it will give you a better idea. 
So stock A, 19% would lie somewhere over here. So this is basically a middle point for stock A. And this 10% is saying that if I am going below above one standard deviation or below standard below one standard deviation, then your 68% of values will be covered or your most of the values will be covered. So if I am at 19% somewhere down here and add one standard deviation that means 19 plus 10 which is 29. So that will lie somewhere over here. So this is my upper limit out of which you have only two observations. And if I go one standard deviation down that means 19 minus 10% that means 9% which will be over here then you just have one value outside of your limit standard deviation limit so from 29% to 9% you have only three values 1 2 and 3 so it basically says that 68% uh, uh, of values is lies within one standard deviation so from where this 68% comes this this is basically a concept of central limit theorem which I will going to explain but here uh, for the sake of explaining the um, standard deviation it is important to mention what does uh, one standard deviation two standard deviation or three standard deviation comes so standard deviation also helps us or mostly used in defining the confidence interval so while uh, you may have observed uh, while somebody is showing you some analysis then they are interpreting it in terms of confidence interval and mostly it is used 95 percent of confidence interval how is your result coming or how is your hypothesis testing results are coming where you define certain question uh, let's say uh, in our country let's say in india if an average height of a man is 170 centimeter then uh, you are saying uh, whether it is it true or wrong and then you do a hypothesis testing and then at a particular significance level you are trying to identify whether it is true or not so generally the significance level which is used is 95 percent and then you say at a 95 percent significance level most of the men in India has a height of 170 meter. So in that case, 170 is basically your mean and whatever value you get as a standard deviation, uh, let's say uh, 10 centimeter or 8 centimeter, you go to standard deviation above or below at a 95% significance level and check whether your values are coming uh, within that standard deviation or not. So I know it may be a little bit of complexity as of now to understand what is one standard deviation or two standard deviation or three standard deviation but when it will I'll show you in another video the central limit theorem it will be uh, simplified. But for now understanding uh, what the standard deviation is saying we will say that if we are above or below to the mean of one standard deviation that means 10 percent then our 68 percent of values are covered which gives us that maximum values has been represented within this 68 percent of area and to interpret it in another way uh, let's say you are a retail company right and uh, you are planning to uh, create clothes for uh, men in India and now you are uh, you want to identify how how much there is a variation in the height in the waist in the chest of indian mats in that case you basically collect the data from uh, various locations maybe from the government sites and all and then you identify that what is the mean what is an average height of uh, of a person so in that case if you are planning to create pants for them then you then you can identify where or what will be the maximum number of pants or height of the pants that you will need to create or if you are trying to create shirts then it is important to know what is not only the height 
but the, what is the chest or how the shoulders looks like in terms of uh, uh, the measurement and then you decide uh, that when you are planning to cover most of the population that means 68 percent or 95 percent then what is your standard deviation and what is your mean and then only you can clearly cover whether it is um, whether you want to go with one standard deviation which is 68 percent of valuation whether you want to go two standard deviation that means almost 95 percent of population or you want to go three standard deviation which is uh, almost 99.3 or 7 percent population that means it covers everything so here uh, similarly in the context of stock if we are just one standard deviation that we are from 9% from this observation to 29% to this observation. If we are going above two standard deviation that means 95% of confidence then 19 plus this will become 2, two multiplied by 10 that means 20 and it will be 39. So 39 will lie outside somewhere outside of this graph and all of this observation which is on the upper side will cover and on the downside if you subtract 20% from 19% that will be somewhere in minus value will uh, outside of the chart and then and all of your observation will be covered in that and then you can see uh, how much relevant it is in case if you need to make a decision so this standard deviation uh, helps us a lot in defining the confidence intervals and then taking a decision uh, taking the complex business decision about uh, how we want to execute the thing like the example I mentioned about uh, the retail company who is planning to create uh, pants or shirts for their specific uh, set of consumers in a particular country after this uh, we have coefficient of variation but before I move that uh, one important thing about standard deviation is uh, when you calculate it, it it basically gives the output in that particular measure of unit. So for example, here I have the returns in percentages. It will the standard deviation will be in percentages. If I have uh, let's say a measurement related situation which I explained for pants or shirts in inches, then it will give us the output in inches and that's how you can subtract or divide from its mean and get the value so basic uh, idea is that output of a standard deviation in the same unit uh, which is your uh, core or your source unit is now let's move on to the coefficient of variation so coefficient of variation is nothing but uh, the standard deviation divided by the mean so that's why it is a relative measure of standard deviation and it always gives the result in terms of percentages and because it gives the uh, result in terms of percentages it becomes more useful as compared to the standard deviation why because uh, let's say you have uh, uh, in your company you have 10 different products and there are a couple of products who are measured in weight. There are a couple of products who are measured in heights and all. So in that case, the measure of unit is different. And if you will produce the standard deviation, their measure of unit, because their measure of unit is different, the different numbers will come in, the, in that particular measure of unit, uh, whether in weight or whether in height, uh, in centimeters or in kilograms or grams. In that case, you if you if you are at a very high level and you want to see which of your product has highest variation from a quality control perspective, then in that case you won't be able to measure it because all of your products are giving the result in different measure of unit. But to compare them, you have to uh, put them in a single measure of unit. Uh, things like percentage, whether a product is having a variability of 10%, 15%, 25% and that's how you can really make some kind of a comparison and identify which product is good from a quality control perspective or which product has uh, bad uh, or high percentage or bad percentage 
in terms of quality control perspective. And that's where your coefficient of variation comes into the picture. And then you can basically uh, compare multiple products which are in uh, different units and all. But since uh, your coefficient of variation has a denominator of uh, mean, that's why it is sensitive to the mean. So if it mean is increasing or decreasing, then it will going to give a lot of impact on coefficient of variation. So it's just a question or uh, just a thing to keep in mind whenever you are trying to derive the coefficient of variation. So if I go into the properties and show you the coefficient of variation, then it is nothing but the standard deviation, which I calculated over here, divided by the average of return, which is mean, mean value of this. And it is always in terms of percentage. So these are the three things, range, which is uh, maximum value and then subtraction of minimum value. It gives us the range of over, overall data set. Standard deviation uh, gives you the idea how many values are distributing above the mean or, or cl clustering below the mean. And then the coefficient of variation is basically a relative measure of standard deviation uh, which helps us doing the comparison or uh, putting different measure of unit into a single measure of unit for a better idea perspective. So these are the three things uh, I wanted to discuss in this video and I hope you have got some idea. But if uh, somewhere things have got a little bit complex then just put your comments and I will try to answer them uh, as soon as possible. And uh, this down there below to this chart, uh, below to this metric, I have a simple chart, uh, which is just for a demonstration perspective, which is having these uh, returns plotted as a data, as a points or circles and red line is basically an average line. You can very easily create it. If I just right click on this, um, I have chosen the return as the dimension. So over here and here. And uh, within the expression, I am using the stock return. And instead of saying line, I have chosen the symbol dots. And then I have chosen the linear line just to uh, show this, how the data is increasing or decreasing according the line is being created. Uh, to change the data points size and all, you can go into the presentation and choose the symbol size. By default, it is always two and some, and because of that, the size is less, uh, not really good for representation perspective. But uh, when you make it five, it gives you the good representation. So you can create this and visually see how your data is distributed. So that's pretty much all I wanted to discuss and I'll meet you in the new video with a new topic.